Hi guys, it's Lara. Thank you all for watching and welcome back to my channel. So I was on Pinterest the other day and I was looking for some fun Easter DIY ideas and then I have seen a pin with these cute chicken and I thought, okay, that's it. We have to make these together. So that's what we are gonna do today. Now, since this was not my original idea, I will of course give the person who posted the pin credit. So the pin is linked down below. And even though the person has a pattern on their homepage, I created my own pattern and that will be posted on my sewing platform. So that will be also linked down below. So if you want to know how to make these super cute triangular chicken, then please keep watching. All right, so here we have all the materials and the sewing supplies for our chicken. So I have here two sheets of yellow fabric. I decided to grab one that was plain and I wanted to make the second chicken of a fabric with a print and I thought the flowery fabric was super cute. It would look a little bit different. And then I have here several sheets of felt for the comb and the waddles and also for the eyes and for the beak. So I want to make the beak orange, the comb and the waddles uh, red and obviously the eyes are going to be black and white. I have here also some leftover yarn I want to use up, stuffings from an old pillow and then of course you're going to need needles, pins, scissors, a sewing crayon and a measuring tape and I'm also going to use a guide for the base of the chicken. One more thing, I'm going to be working with my sewing machine but if you do not have a sewing machine, you can still create these chicken uh, because you can simply hand stitch them. If you are new to sewing and you need to learn how to do all the hand stitches, I have an entire course for that on my sewing platform. So that will be also listed as a link in the video description. And now let's jump right into the project. First, we are going to go over the pattern. So this rectangle, that's going to be the main body for the chicken. Then we have here the comb. These are going to be the waddles, the beak and the feet. So the comb and the waddles are going to be made of the red felt. So I'm going to copy the outline of both and I actually don't like using the crayon because it's really hard to mark the fabric. So instead of that, I'm just going to use a felt marker and I'm going to go a little bit further from the edge uh, because then when I cut it, I will have a nice clean edge without any felt marker lines. And that definitely works much better than the crayon on the felt because it's so, you know, it's so fuzzy and the crayon tends to get caught and it's just not working right. So now I'm going to outline the edge of the waddles and I will cut out both pieces. I will make sure that when I cut that I stay inside of the lines because that way I will get rid of the felt marker lines. And since I'm going to be making more chicken, I'm just going to place the already cut out pieces and I'm going to pin them to the felt. And then I'm simply going to cut around the edges and I'm always going to make sure that I use up the fabric as efficiently as possible because I don't want to waste anything and I will cut out in total four sets because I plan on making four of the chicken. All right, so I have all the combs and the waddles and this is how much of the felt I still have left. Whenever I have little pieces like that, I don't throw them away. I keep them for future projects because sometimes you just need a little circle and these little chunks are perfect for that. So as always, I'm not wasting any fabric. Now I will grab the orange fabric and I will outline the rectangles for the beak. So I'm going to go directly to the edge in order to, again, not waste any fabric. 
and I'm gonna make sure I'll go a little bit further from the edge with the felt marker so that I can cut around. And now let's also outline the feet. So we are going to need eight in total. So here we have the feet and the beaks and the leftover felt. Now I grabbed the yellow fabric with the flower print and I folded, folded it in the middle and then I tried to position the pattern and I found out that I can actually position the pattern twice on this edge because the pattern already has seam allowance. So I'm just gonna outline here this edge and here the center and then I'm gonna position the pattern to the other side. The center is already marked so I only have to outline here this edge and I'm also going to pin the fabric together so that it doesn't move because now it's nicely aligned and I'm going to cut out four rectangles Here I have to fold, so I have to cut that through. And now I have the pieces for two of my chicken. And now I will do the same with the unicolor fabric. So here we have the pieces for all for chicken and you will notice that the fabric is a little bit wrinkled so I'll go shortly downstairs and I will press the fabric. This looks definitely much better. So and now we can start working on our chicken. As you can see I already finished one because I find that it's easier to follow the tutorial when you see the finished product first. So here is what it looks like. This is the bottom with the feet. This is what it looks like from the side. So I have here all the pieces that we need in addition to all the felt pieces that we cut out together. I also cut out two ellipses of the white felt and two circles of the black felt for the eyes. So first we need to position all three of these pieces. So I put the eyes and the feet to the side for now and I will also put one of the rectangles to the side for now. So you can see that the comb is placed exactly uh, on the top of the chicken. So I will place it inside like so and only so far from this edge uh, where the seam will be, where the stitches will be. But you can see that this rounded part goes a little bit over and I don't, wanna, um, I don't want this to get caught in the stitches so I have to fold it to the side and I will pin the comb in like so and I will also pin this downwards because then I don't have to worry about this piece. The next thing I want to position is the beak so I will fold this rectangle in the middle. Now the fold is the front of the beak and the waddles go slightly over the beak so I am going to place the beak so it's folded here we have to fold in the front. I'm gonna fold also the wattles and I'm gonna place them over the beak. It's about half an inch uh, and I'm gonna pin these two things together for the time being. And now I'm gonna position them about an inch from the top. So the top of the beak is now an inch away from this edge. It doesn't have to be exactly an inch but it's a good estimate. And I will pin these in like so and make sure that the waddles are straight. Even though the chicken are so cute, they will look cute even if the waddles are gonna be a little bit at an angle, but I always try to place them nicely. So these are these two things. And now I can grab the second rectangle and place it over this. And now I have to make sure that I pin everything nicely in place with the felt pieces. So 
When I position the second rectangle on the first one, the wrong side facing up, I will slowly remove this pin and put it back in, making sure that the felt pieces are pinned together with the yellow fabric. And I will put here the pins at an angle. And here I have the pin on the top for the comb. So I will also slowly replace it, um, not replace it, pull it out, and I will make sure I will hold the rounded side of the comb inside. I will put the pin in. And then I will pin together also the top edge, like so. And now this is the side where we have the beak and the waddles. And this is the side where we have the comb. And this is the side that we also want to sew together. So we are going to be sewing through three edges. And you can sew these pieces together with a straight stitch on your sewing machine or with back stitch. If you are new to sewing and you need to learn first how to hand stitch, there are plenty of tutorials on my, on my sewing platform, so I will link the course for hand stitching down below. Now let's go over all the things that we've done right now that we've pinned together on the finished chicken. So we positioned the beak, the waddles, the comb inside of these two rectangles, and we are going to be sewing together this side, this side, and this side. So I'll talk to you once I have finished that. Here is what it looks like when I have sewn together these three sides. And now I'm going to turn this to the right side. We will have to turn it back to the wrong side, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like so far. So when I turn the fabric to the right side, here is what it should look like. And you can grab something pointy. I like grabbing a brush with quite a pointy end and you can shape the top of the chicken. I don't recommend using scissors, which is something I occasionally do, but the problem is that the point of the scissors could damage the fabric. So it's always better if you have something that's not sharp. So now you have seen what the product looks like so far. I'm going to turn it back to the wrong side because we need to sew or stitch together the bottom. So it's a rectangle, but we are going to grab it like so and open the rectangle and align the back seam and the front seam where we have the beak and the waddles, right? So I'm just gonna grab it like so and I will put in a few pins. And I recommend stitching at least half an inch on one side, then leave about one and a half inches open and then you can sew or stitch together the remaining part. So now again you can use the back stitch or simply a straight stitch on your sewing machine. Here we go. So this is sewn together apart from this little section and I will use that in order to turn the chicken to the right side. So what I recommend is kind of pulling everything a little bit apart and first pushing with your thumbs towards the hole and then ideally you grab one piece of the fabric that comes from the inside and then you can start carefully pulling it out like so. And now I want to shape the chicken so I will grab the end of my painting brush and shape all the pointy edges so the two pointy edges here and the bum there's also a pointy edge and the one on the top so this is what the chicken looks like so far so it's starting looking a little bit like the finished one and now we have to stuff it so i'm gonna grab my scissors first and chop away all these extra threads sticking out and then I'll grab the stuffings and I will start pushing them through the opening and, you know, doing it with my finger, 
putting it in like so and shoving the stuffings inside. You can also try to do it with a tool, although I find it easier with my index finger in this case. And of course, if you leave the opening a little bit bigger, it's going to be easier. But then again, you will have a larger part to hand stitch together. That's of course up to you. So, and whenever I put in a little bit of the stuffings, I will push them first towards the top where we have the comb and I will shape it and then I will keep adding stuffings. But you know what? I'm going to open here two stitches because I find the hole a little bit too small for the stuffings and now it should be a little bit easier. At this point I will grab the painting brush and I will move some of the stuffings towards the corners so that they are nicely shaped, especially here on the sides. And then I will keep pushing and shaping the chicken a little bit. You can roll the stuffings a little bit so that it has the shape that you find the prettiest for you. That can be of course all about personal preference. And now we have here this hole, so for the time being I'm gonna put in a pin, uh, but later I will stitch this together. And now I will position the eyes, so I will grab the two ellipses and put them somewhere close here to the top and pin them in place. And I will grab a needle with white thread and I will stitch them here together in the middle so this is just a simple whip stitch and then I'm just gonna do a simple running stitch around the edge Now that the white ellipses have been stitched in place, I can position the black circles. So I'll start here. I will pull the thread through the bottom and I will hide the knot that I made at the end. And then I will come through the other eye and pull the needle through the other black circle. And I will just make a few stitches to keep these two in place, like so. It's really easy. So here is what our chicken looks like so far. Uh, so what you can do is you can grab a red thread and maybe stitch the bottles here on the very top to the yellow fabric so that they stay a bit more open if that's what you want. You don't have to, but it's a possibility. And you can also grab the beak, flatten it a little bit and maybe stitch this section to the yellow fabric if you want the beak to be pointed downwards and more flat. But again, that's all about per personal preference. I think I'm going to leave the beak like so, but I'm going to stitch the waddles in place only here on the top. And now I have to close this hole. So for that, I threaded my needle with a yellow thread and I'm going to do here the leather stitch. Now the bottom is closed and I can place the feet. So I'm going to place them like so and pin them in place. And now I'm going to stitch them from this seam around this edge with a whip stitch. And I'm also going to stitch in place the waddles here on the top. And then our chicken will be finished. Here we go, our second chicken is done. Mm -hmm. 
I just started working on the yellow chicken uh, without any pattern and what I wanted to show you is that you can always stitch or sew these felt pieces in place first because then you will make sure that they won't move and that they will stay exactly the way you positioned them. I kept only these pins that are keeping the rounded sections of the comb away from the seam so that it can't get caught. So that might be a little bit of a help. So now I'm gonna position the second rectangle. I'm gonna pin everything in place and then I'm basically going to proceed just like we did with the flowery pattern chicken. I recommend turning the piece always to the right side first so, so that you can make sure that nothing got caught where it's not supposed to be and you can also remove the pins that held the comb in place and if you already know that you would like to stitch the bottles in place here on the top then you can do it now it's a little bit easier and you can uh, place the knot of your red thread inside so it's easier to hide and then you can do the sew up also on the wrong side and you could theoretically also stitch on the eyes right now before you will sew or stitch together the bottom and stuff the chicken. So here we have the chicken so far. Now I have to turn it to the wrong side and I have to sew together the bottom. Then I need to stuff it, stitch together the hole and then I will place and stitch on the feet just like I did with the flowery chicken. So the rest will be basically the same, but the difference is that this is all stitched in place. So you can do it either way. That always depends on your personal preference. I actually like much better stitching all these things in place once the chicken has been stuffed, but that's just me. So maybe try both variations and see what you like better. All right, here you go. So here are both variations. You can of course decide for yourself whether you want to use a fabric that's just unicolored or a fabric with a pattern. I think they are both cute. I could definitely see also using old jeans for these. They would look great made of denim. Plus denim is a great material for all kinds of DIYs. And I think they are not only a great decor, but they would make also a lovely Easter present. In general, I would recommend using any fabric that's not stretchy because I find that they keep the shape much nicer. Honestly, these guys are so incredibly cute. I just can't get over how super sweet these are. And one thing I absolutely loved about this project was that it goes so fast, so you can easily create a few in one afternoon so you'll have a few for your house as a decor and you can also create in one or two afternoons enough as Easter presents. And that is going to be it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. As I have mentioned at the beginning, the free sewing pattern for these cute guys is available on my sewing platform. You will find the link in the video description. So thank you all so much for watching. I love you guys so, so much. And see you soon with my next creative project. Bye.